Hi everyone, it's Sainan once again. I'm currently at Belém, near the capital city of Portugal, Lisbon. And it was from here that during the 15th and 16th century that the Portuguese discoverers departed to discover the naval route to India through there, the Atlantic Ocean. The Portuguese were also the first Europeans to visit the land of the rising sun, Japan. This first contact in 1543 brought two things that changed Japanese history and culture forever. The word of our Lord Jesus Christ and Archibasis. Christianity was such a success in Japan that led to great discomfort amongst the traditional Japanese feudalistic society. Gunpowder was also a game changer, since now a peasant, trained with a arquebus, could easily kill a samurai at a safe distance, bringing fear to the leadership of the nation. The shogun, the de facto leader of the nation, decided to close its borders to foreigners, known as gaijin. And for more than two centuries, Japan was an isolated nation, with the exception of the presence of Dutch merchants at the city of Nagasaki. But in 1854, Commodore Matthew Perry from the United States arrived in Japan with a fleet of black ships, with a mission to open the nation to the world. The American pressure forced Japan to sign an unfavorable treaty. After a series of internal struggles between the forces of the Shogun and the Emperors, the new and young Emperor Meiji became the new undisputed leader. Emperor Meiji saw the power of the new Western weapons and knew that if he didn't develop and rearm the nation quickly, Japan would become another colony of a foreign power. A recent example was the famous Opium Wars that ruined the neighbor Imperial China. The Meiji era, that started in 1868, quickly transformed Japan from a feudalistic medieval nation into a modern, industrialized nation-state due to the influences of Western scientific, technological and political ideas. Japan was also extremely united because of loyalty and the strength of Emperor Meiji. However, the industry needed large quantities of raw materials such as coal and iron to grow, something that Japan lacks. Korea, on the other hand, was quite close to Japan and had lots of those much needed materials. It was ruled by a weak government under the strong influence of the neighbor Chinese Empire. China was at the time ruled by the manipulative Empress Dowager Chichi, a former concubine, who ruled the nation through two boy emperors. Manchu China was at this time extremely corrupt and divided because of internal rebellions, political intrigues and famine. The ruling system didn't differ much from the one used by the first emperor of China more than 2000 years earlier. Military leaders were selected according to their loyalty to the Empress and background, not because of their skills. Combat decisions were actually made by local mandarins, who knew nothing of naval or land warfare. While Xi Xi spent all the money that she could to build new and even more luxurious palaces, foreign powers started to grab territory and resources from China, and in the middle was the poor Chinese citizen, oppressed and struggling to survive. Still, some military leaders with vision and patriotism were able to collect enough funds to acquire two ironclad battleships from Germany, in order to defend the capital Beijing from foreign attackers. However, many mandarins and local chieftains nominally loyal to Xi Qi deviated money from the naval defense budget to offer gifts to the Empress to secure their places. According to this book that I use for reference, when the war started, the navy had a huge debt, enough to buy 20 similar battleships. This video was recorded during the Covid pandemic, so I wasn't able to travel to Japan or China. But to explain these new technologies, the Portuguese Navy Museum in Lisbon has all the elements needed to explain them. At the beginning of the 19th century, sailed power warships with dozens of cannons on each side were involved on massive naval battles, like the Battle of Trafalgar. These large sail ships didn't change much from the galleons of the 16th century. But two major industrial era developments led to the creation of the first modern warships, steam power and explosive shells. 
First, some warships received primitive steam engines as an auxiliary means of propulsion. Naval admirals still saw with distrust this new development, and many ships of this era were built with both steam power and sails. Over time, these engines became much more reliable and powerful, so sails were progressively removed. During the Crimean War that started in 1853, Russia used a new revolutionary type of naval weapon, the Pikesun's gun, which was capable of firing explosive shells. With this new weapon, Russia was able to annihilate an Ottoman fleet of wooden ships during the Battle of Sinop. Most of the guns at the time were muzzle-loading, aka loaded from the front, but rifling was introduced to naval guns around this time, dramatically improving both range and accuracy. The fear of these new weapons led some naval engineers to cover their new wooden hull steam-powered warships with iron plates to protect them. The age of the ironclad had finally arrived. The French launched the first ocean-going ironclad, the Gloire, in 1859, and shortly after, all major Western nations started to build similar types of warships. The famous naval battle of Hampton Roads during the American Civil War between the CSS Virginia and the USS Monitor proved the concept of these new industrial developments. An example of a ship of this era was this, the Portuguese armored corvette Vasco da Gama, small but armed with two powerful 260mm naval guns inside the central armored battery. Quick firing guns were developed in Britain at the end of the 19th century, and they were bought in large quantities by Japan. Their caliber varied between rifle bullets, for example this wonderful northern felt multi-barrel machine gun that was preserved in the Portuguese Navy Museum, and up to 152mm or 6 inch, most famously Ellswick guns. Most ships also had a large number of guns like this 47mm revolver cannon to destroy enemy torpedo boats. This example had a theoretical rate of fire of 68 rounds per minute. Quick firing guns use a breech loading system, which means that they were loaded from the rear, and single part cased ammunition, essentially a cartridge containing both shell and propellant, making them extremely easy to load and fire. Their rate of fire only depended on the training, agility and strength of the sailors loading the guns. After this quick paragraph about naval developments, let's get back to China. Like I said, they acquired two ironclads from the recently unified Germany. During those days, China had a total of four independent navies, which were in fact underfunded local militias. Most of the budget went to the Beiyang fleet, the closest to the capital. These fleets never worked together. If they did, they could have easily overwhelmed the Japanese during the war. These ironclads were, in fact, wooden frigates that received armor to convert them into powerful warships and were heavily armed with four 305mm breech-loading guns in two double turrets, plus two 6-inch guns mounted on single turrets and a few smaller guns. Some representations of these ships show them in combat without the armored turrets, but as we can see from this photo of them leaving Germany, and this one taken after the war, they both had armored turrets installed. Although powerful and larger compared to the Japanese navy, the Beiyang fleet had many many problems, and corruption there was literally out of control. For example, some ships of the fleet only had 50% of the shells that they needed and not enough propelling charges to fire the guns. In fact, some of those shells didn't even have explosives inside, but porcelain or cement instead, making them completely useless. Because of these limitations, Chinese sailors couldn't practice their accuracy because they needed to save enough shells for a war. However, their courage under fire became legendary. Japan, on the other hand, had recently bought two Fuji-class battleships from the United Kingdom, at great expense, but the ships only arrived after the war. In order to quickly assemble a powerful and affordable navy, the nation was influenced by the ideas of the Jeanne Cole, 
a new friendship building philosophy. The idea was to build smaller and faster ships armed with the latest technological innovations, such as torpedoes and quick-firing guns, to destroy much larger and heavier warships. The most important ships that Japan fielded during the war were the three Matsushima protected cruisers. On paper, they were truly fearsome. They were armed with 11 quick-firing 120mm guns, a large quantity of torpedoes and a massive 320mm cannon gun. Although the quick-firing guns were quite effective and reliable, the 320mm cannon gun was quite possibly the worst naval gun ever developed. It had a theoretical rate of fire of one shell every 5 to 10 minutes, but in fact one shot per hour was more correct because of constant uh, mechanical breakdowns. Two of the ships of this class, Itsukushima and Ashidate, mounted the 320mm cannon gun forward. Matsushima mounted the gun above the superstructure. The main advantage of Japan was their extremely disciplined crew and their competent commanders. The brightest students of the academy received training in England, which was at the time the most powerful and reputable naval power in the world. Japan also used a secret new and extremely powerful explosive known as Shimose. It was extremely unstable, but gave the Japanese an edge against the Chinese. They also decoded the Chinese secret transmission codes, being able to know everything that the Chinese did. Both nations also fielded a large number of small cruisers and torpedo boats for escort and combat duties. Japan, for example, used the Yoshino protected cruiser, which was heavily armed with four 152mm and eight 120mm guns, and many smaller guns, and could sail at 23 knots. China had a large number of cruiser-type warships, armed usually with two or three 210mm Krupp naval guns. All of these ships would be used on the first conflict between Japan and China, known as the First Sino-Japanese War, in 1894. But for that, you'll have to wait for my next episode. So far this is my first project for 2021, don't forget to like and subscribe my YouTube page for more videos and ring the bell to be notified each time that I make a new video. For more info about my LEGO models, please visit my Flickr webpage. Thank you and see you next time!